Welcome to the Mom Life Unscripted podcast, the podcast show that normalizes the struggles of motherhood without being a Debbie Downer or using toxic positivity. Stick around for motherhood journeys from everyday mamas just like you, plus how we're navigating this wild ride we call motherhood. You might even come away with some tips you can use to survive and maybe even thrive. Society puts so much pressure on us to be the perfect mom when there's no such thing. This prevents so many of us from sharing our stories for fear of being mom shamed. As my favorite sociologist Brene Brown says, shame is the most powerful master emotion. It's the fear that we're not good enough. If we can share our story with someone who responds with empathy and understanding, shame can't survive. We're all in this together, Mama. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to Mom Life Unscripted. We took a hiatus last week um, due to the Christmas holidays, right? Um, I, if you followed me or if you're new, welcome. Um, But if you follow me, you know I'm a mom of three under the age of five. So I have a four-year-old, a two and a half-year-old and a nine-month-old. So we really wanted to, um, I don't know, make Christmas, like focus on them for Christmas. And um, we had a major plot twist and we all came down with the flu on Christmas. (laughs) So it's been wild because I was going to try to hurry up and record and maybe I'll release the day after Christmas. And then we all got the flu and I was like, okay, it's a sign. Like we're just going to take it easy. And that's pretty much what I've been doing this week is really taking it easy. Um, a lot of people joke about the week between, um, like Christmas and new year's. It's like this weird, like vibe because we don't know what day it is or anything like that. Um, and I used to feel like that and just not like it very much, but this year I've really enjoyed it. Um, we've been staying in our jammies, we've been, um, hanging out, um, playing with our new toys and just spending time with family. And it's, it's been, it's been nice. Just, I'm kind of trying to soak it up because if you know me, I am, I have a business. Um, so it's really hard for me to step away. Um, and that is purely because I make it hard for me, right? Like that is not any shade to like my clients or anything like that. I love them. I adore them. Um, that is a me problem. So as I was kind of reflecting back on everything, um, and just hold on sidebar, I have ADHD, so I'm probably going to fidget as I talk, but it helps me concentrate. Um, so hopefully this conversation is pretty linear and not like a ping pong ball going all over the place. Um, but if you are watching me on YouTube and you see, or on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, and you're seeing the video and you're like, oh my gosh, she's so like fidgety and all over the place. That's why it helps me concentrate. Um, so anyway, just that little sidebar. Um, so really going through this past week, um, I'm recording on New Year's Eve. Um, it's a wild party over here. Um, no, but as I was kind of going through the last week and really being kind of forced to slow down, right? We got the flu, um, everybody except for my two and a half year old, he ended up miraculously not coming down with it. Um, And honestly, we all had a very mild case because we got our flu shots in the beginning of the year. So, um, or in the fall. So luckily it wasn't too crazy for us, but, um, just really slowing down kind of was really nice because it helped me set the intention or, or think about what intentions I'm going to be setting for 2024. Um, and I don't know about you. I have I always go in with like really big ambitious goals and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, right? Okay, I love big ambitious goals. I'm all about like, how can I make X, Y, Z happen instead of being like, oh, can't do it. Um, However, it was really kind of eye-opening this past week 
to just slow down and okay, like what's really important? Am I being busy for the sake of being busy? Um, because being busy and being productive are two completely different things, right? We could be productive with like, you know, working minimal hours. I've done that before. When I am in full on focus mode um, in my business, I'm um, I'm a content writer. So um, I work with clients on their content writing and writing is kind of what I call deep work where I just have to like sit and focus, which hello, ADHD is kind of hard. But um, I find when I kind of get in that mode, I can do so much more in such a short amount of time than on days where I'm just kind of like all over the place. I feel like I'm busy, but got nothing done all day because I'm constantly like jumping from one thing to the next. Um, And I know most of the people that listen are moms. So you could probably relate to this. It's not even just about work. Like um, this week when I was pretty much, I pretty much took off of work. So it was basically, okay, stay at home mom. And um, even as I'm doing things like with my kids and like trying to multitask and do like 87 different things, I was like, I'm busy all day long, but I am not getting anything done. And that's, that's what I call being busy just to like, for the sake of being busy. And I just, it was kind of a wake up call to myself um, that I was like, I'm, what am I like running away from? Right. Like, or not running away from what am I avoiding? Why am I just trying to be busy all the time? Like what, what is it that is making me feel like I have to be busy, busy, busy all the time? Or, you know, so I really got to thinking and i still haven't 100% figured it out yet, but I feel like, um, a lot of me is just like running away with dealing some, uh, with some of like my own, I don't want to say like inner demons. Cause that's kind of like dealing kind of with my own inner issues that need resolving, um, inner like toxic behavior, because as, as hard as I try truly as hard as I try, I still exhibit toxic behavior. And I feel like we all do. We, we all do from time to time. Um, and so I feel like, especially this week being forced to slow down, it really just got me thinking, okay, what am I avoiding? And, and I just, I don't know what it is about this week, but like my whole perspective just started to shift. Like I found that, um, just being sometimes when you're a mom, things get, um, oh, I'm going to shout out to Angelica really quick. I know that's so random, but she just texted me happy almost new year. So, um, and I saw it on my laptop come through. So, Hey, Angelica, I know you listen to the podcast every episode because you're amazing. Um, she's my youngest godmother, but, um, so shout out happy new year. (laughs) Um, even though this will air after new year's, but anyway, um, ADHD brain for you, but, um, my toxic, I've just like any kind of toxic traits, but like, you know, being a mom, it's, it's hard when you feel like you're doing all the things. And I like constantly felt this resentment of like, like, I love my kids. I love my husband. Like, please do not get any of that twisted, but the constant resentment of feeling like I have to do everything or it doesn't get done. How many times have we as moms said that? How many times? Like I probably say it, um, every day of the week. Um, and I know several other moms in the same boat and it just got me thinking like, okay, is this really true. And, and I'm going to preface this with in some cases, yes, it really is true. And yes, that is absolutely 100% valid. Like, just let's get that out of the way. Um, is yes, that is true. Um, however, for my case, as I reflected a little bit, um, inward and just kind of 
some of the things, um, you know, just like the little tips I would get in with my husband and be like, oh, you didn't do that. And then I just started thinking, I'm like, okay, let's, let's like take a step back. Let's get out of the resentment. Let's get out of feeling like, like, let's just step back for a second and kind of like take, you know, take our feelings out of the equation for a minute. Um, and then as I looked back, um, and kind of reflected, I would, I noticed that I was one expecting my husband to be me, right? Like I have very, um, extremely high standards for myself. And a lot of times they're unrealistic. Just going to throw that out there. Um, I'm working on it, but the things that I will push myself to and push and push and push and it's myself to do. He is really great about like holding a boundary, like, Hey, I don't have space for that right now. And, and I would get like, so mad. I'm like, well, I have to, and I, I have to do it. And that's not fair. And, and then I thought about it and I was like, he's, he's holding a boundary of, Hey, I can't take care of the dishes right now. I need X, Y, like I need I'm really overwhelmed. The kids, you know, I've had the kids for a little bit. I need, I need a few minutes. And I just, well, when I have the kids, I can do the dishes and clean the playroom. And, and, and that's not, that's toxic. I'm just like, I'm owning it. Okay. That's, that's not a good place to be. And so I've really just been thinking about that a lot. And I was like, okay, am I mad at him? Cause he is am I mad at him? Cause he's not doing it. Or am I mad at myself that I can't hold my own boundaries? And that was a really big realization for me is like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a little envious, right. That he can hold those boundaries and I can't seem to do it. Um, And that is not him putting pressure on me to do it. This is 100% like a me thing and probably society, like the pressure that society puts on moms, but this is 100% a me thing. And then I think back about how many times I've experienced severe burnout, severe, like severe burnout. I can, it's been at least four or five times. So what's that like? once a year, pretty much since my oldest was born. And I I was just like, that was just an astonishing realization for me that when I, I'm not angry that he's, and I'm not resentful that he's holding those boundaries and like holding space for himself. I'm, I'm resentful and angry because I can't seem to do it. And I'm envious that he can. And again, that is very much a me problem. That is like not healthy behavior. And I very much working on that. Um, But just like having that perspective shift was huge for me. I'm like, okay, what is, what is a me problem? And what is, okay, is he saying, you know, no, you have to do this or no, I'm not going to do it. No, that's not true. He's saying, Hey, I don't have space for that right now. Um, Either I'm not feeling well or I'm tired or I need a minute. And I feel like as moms, we feel at least I'll I'll speak for myself as a mom. I feel like I often can't ask for that. And that is not anything that comes from anyone else, but me, because my husband, he'll be the first to tell you, he's like, she could ask for a minute. She could ask for, you know, whatever I, he gives it to me. He, He gives it to me. If I say, I need a minute, I'm so done. I need a mommy minute. And he's like, go go for it. Um, so that was a pretty deep revelation for me. Um, it was just like, wow, okay, this is very much a me issue. And, um, just realizing that. And again, I am going to say in some situations, that's not the case. And it really is like the other, your partner won't contribute or whatever. And I get that. That's, that's valid in my situation. Like I said, in my personal experience, I'm speaking from my personal experience. 
that's not the case. And it's very much a me problem. Um, so I just, I just kind of like wanted to share that perspective and really just, I guess, show other moms that, you know, when we feel this way, like, let's look at the why. And some of you might be feeling resentful because your partner doesn't contribute 1000% valid. And even how I'm feeling is valid, feeling resentful and thinking that I had to do everything. Well, yeah, if, if I thought that I had to do everything, that would absolutely make sense for me to feel resentful and angry and frustrated. Um, it wasn't until I took a step back and like feelings took the feelings out of the equation. Okay. What is the reality of the situation? Like what is actually like, what are the facts? Okay. And, um, yeah, that was, that was a big realization for me. And, um, and also got me thinking about how I, my last like pretty severe burnout situation was about five months ago. It was right before I turned 31. So it was in July, the middle of July. And I just like completely just went through a severe bout of depression, anxiety, like burnt out exhaustion. It was horrible. And ever since I went through that, I've been taking really important steps of holding boundaries. Um, especially when it came to what, like my work life and my, um, just like what I give my energy to, whether that be people, things, you know? Um, and so, and I've always felt like, I was like, ah, something's still like, not something's it's just like not it's like I had a missing piece I was like there's like a missing piece to this like I know what I'm doing I know I know the steps I need to take and I'm doing that and then just like something still doesn't feel like it's all there and it wasn't until this past week when I took a step back and I was like oh okay it's I I know how to handle like the outside forces right but okay it's what's in here in, in me, um, that I wasn't really addressing. Um, so I, with all that being said, I just wanted to kind of come on here and tell moms that if you're feeling all these, like this certain way that, um, it's, it's, you're not alone one and two, um, sometimes it's good to just take a step back and just slow down. It wasn't until I completely slowed down. And if you ask anybody, I'm always like, go, 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 go. Like, what's the next idea? What's the next, um, thing I'm doing for my business? What's the next thing I'm doing with my kids? What's, you know, it wasn't until I was forced to really just like slow down and take a week and then it's just like, whoa, this huge epiphany and like how timely with New Year's, right? Um, and so I just wanted to share that with you and let you know, hey, you're not alone. And, um, you know, I, I just, I think it's really hard to be a mom. It's really hard to be a parent. And a lot of times we're not taking care of ourselves first. And what does that lead to? Burnout, severe burnout. You're irritable, you're angry, you're resentful. You know, if you're anything like me, you're picking fights with your husband, you are trying so hard to be patient and kind and understanding with everybody. And then you're just like, you lose it and you're short tempered and all of these things. And so I just, I think it's worth not only addressing the outside things that you need to do, right? Like I said, I know what I have to do to get out of burnout as far as like the outside and holding boundaries with people and my time and all of that. But a lot of times we're not focusing on the inside and I feel like that's where a lot of it lies. Um, it's just like, 
we have to empower ourselves to be like, you know what? No, I am, I am worthy of taking a break. I am, I need to take a break. It's going to make me a better human, first of all, for myself and a better mom for my kids, a better partner, um, you know, all these things. So I really just want to encourage moms, if you're listening or parents, if you're listening, please take a step back if you can. And don't forget to work on the the inside, like on you. Um, again, we work on the outside. We, we do all the things we know we need to do. And, but a lot of times we're forgetting about the most important thing. And that's our own um, and taking responsibility for ourselves. And when I say that, I say, do that with love. Um, I have what I joke, I call her the inner mean girl, Regina, who's like in my head, which it's just, you know, like telling me, oh, well, like, how dare you take a break away from your kids? You're a bad mom and blah, blah, blah. Like just things that we tell ourselves that we would never, I would not dare tell another mother parent that ever. I would not dare tell one of my good friends that ever. So in 2024, I'm saying goodbye to Regina, the mean girl in my head. And um, I'm just going to replay anytime I feel those, or I, you know, those thoughts are coming in, I'm, I stop and I don't make myself feel bad about having them. I'm like, okay, my body's just my brain is just trying to keep me safe. There's a lot of science. Ooh, there's a lot of science behind that. Um, that I'm not going to go into because I'm not like a neuroscientist. So I have the inner mean girl, Regina, and I know she's never going to completely go away. Right. But in 2024, I'm replacing that with being more compassionate to myself. Like, okay, how would I talk to my good friend? If she's coming to me saying, I'm so burnt out. I love my kids. I love, I love what I'm doing in my business or my job or, or whatever. And, but I'm just so, I'm so burnt out. And I would be like, you know what, girl, you are killing it. Go take a breather. Go take a mommy minute. I would, I, that's what I would be so encouraging to her. I know because I've actually done that with my friends before. So I'm like, why am I not doing it to myself? Um, and it all goes back to like empowering ourselves. Okay. No, I'm worth, I'm, I'm worthy of taking a break. I am worthy of being happy and healthy and just a good human. And the side effect of that is I'm going to be a better mom and a better partner. And I'm going to show up for my kids better. And I'm going to show up in my business better. And I don't have to constantly be busy and going, going, going in order to be worthy. Like that's not it. I've for so long was attached. I was attaching being busy to my self-worth and that's not the case. Right. Um, you know, we are beautiful humans, beautiful souls, regardless of what we do for our job or if our dishes are clean in the sink, or if, you know, there's a pile of laundry next to my fridge that I'm literally staring at right now. Like that doesn't make me a bad human. That doesn't make me worthless. Okay. Like we have to start separating like our jobs, our, our, um, household chores, what have you from our self-worth. We're, we're, we're enough just as we are. We are worthy of taking good care of ourselves. And I know as moms, um, if you're anything like me, which I know I've talked to a lot of moms, I have a lot of mom friends. I, I know that this is the case. We feel bad. Well, I feel bad for taking a break. I feel bad for taking that 30 minute bath. I feel, I feel bad that I can tell you right now, my husband is at his mom's with all three kids. And I would be lying to you if I told you I didn't have just a little bit of mom guilt for that. But I also know that when he goes every Sunday night for a couple hours and I just get to like decompress and, and 
do something I love or even just relax and watch a TV show with curse words in it because they're not kids around that I'm a better mom when they come back. We all need a little break from some time, from time to time. Um, and so I just really wanted to share that, like as we're going into the new year and some people celebrate the new year as January, some people wait until, is it, I know it's spring. I want to say equinox. Cause I know it's winter and summer solstice. So it's like some people wait till the springtime to, um, do their new year. So this will come out in January, but regardless of when you officially celebrate new years, you can, I just encourage you to kind of like think back on this year and, and, you know, where, what you want to leave behind. Um, so for me, I'm leaving behind Regina, the mean girl in my head, telling me all these horrible things that I would never tell another human being. Um, I'm leaving her kind of like driving being, you know, being behind the wheel and I'm replacing that with being more compassionate with myself. I am leaving behind feeling resentful towards, um, just, I I can't even put in, you know, my finger on one specific thing, but feeling resentful that I feel like I have to do it all in air quotes, um, or feeling resentful that my husband is getting all this me time. And I'm like, I'm not mad at him for his me time. I'm mad because I don't give it to myself. And whose problem is that? It's certainly not his. Um, it's 100% mine because if I ask, he says, absolutely go, go have some, go have some me time, go take a break. And so, um, that's when I'm, I'm leaving behind feeling resentful. I am leaving. I am, um, I am bringing in being more compassionate to myself and, um, I'm in empowering myself, right. Empowering myself to know that I'm worthy of taking care of myself and doing some, something that I love to do and being there for my kids and not having to feel busy all the time. And, and I'm leaving behind every time I sit down to do something I love. That's not like busy either with like household chores wise, busy or business, like how, Oh, how am I going to grow my business busy or um, doing a fun activity with the kids? Anything that's like, not that's centered around other things other than just me. I'm going to stop feeling guilty about that because it makes me a better person, a better human, a better mom. So, um, those are some of the things that I'm kind of leaving behind and bringing forward in 2024. Um, and I hope that moms, um, parents will join me and, and just like, Hey, it's okay that we're feeling this way. Let's, let's get to the root of why, and let's also be more compassionate to ourselves, empower ourselves to know that we are worth this. We don't need to feel guilty for taking a minute. Okay. Our kids are happy, healthy, safe, you know, right? Like I'm not saying, obviously I I am by no means saying, oh, good, good luck, kids. You're on your own. No, (laughs) like, obviously, if you're doing that and leaving, you know, like a a four-year-old, a two-year-old and a baby, and you're saying, oh, peace out, then yeah, you need to feel guilty. That's a problem. It's also (laughs) illegal to leave them alone by themselves. Okay. That's not what I'm saying is making sure that they're, they're in good hands. They're taken care of. Their dad has them or a grandparent has them and they're safe and you take a minute, there's nothing wrong with that. Or maybe they're in bed and after bedtime, you go and watch your Netflix show or you, you know, hang out with your friends or whatever. You don't have to feel guilty about that. And, and I would argue that that doing things that you love and holding boundaries, um, is a form of love. Um, it's a form of self-love and I I feel like this ties in really nicely to, um, the last episode with Kaylin talking about boundaries are an act of love because like when her husband is like, Hey, I, I'm going to talk to you in a minute, but I need to finish this. I can't give you my full attention, but you deserve it. Like, wow, 
So it's kind of the same for us with our kids. And I'll tell, you know, I've started telling my kids, Hey, I really want to give you all of my attention, but I need to finish this thing first. So just give me a minute. And my four-year-old is doing amazing with it. My two-year-old were working. I mean, and the baby, well, he's a baby. So, um, sometimes I kind of have to just stop what I'm doing. Um, of course, but just think about boundaries and what happens when you don't set those boundaries. Okay. If you're anything like me, you haven't set boundaries. And at the end of the day, between the witching hours of four and 7 PM, things get hectic and you haven't set a boundary all day. You haven't given yourself a break. And then next thing you know, your kid asks for something and you blow up on him. Okay. That's not, I mean, and that's going to happen. That's not to guilt you, by the way, I've done it. <laughs> like it happens. It's not to guilt you by any means. So please don't take it that way. Um, but just like, think about what is better holding that boundary in a loving, but firm way. And then going back and giving them their full attention or not. Oh, there's a fly. Sorry guys. Um, or not holding that boundary and like getting so burnt out at the end of the day, just like exploding on your kids or your partner. Like what's the better solution here? So all of this was, I guess, a very long-winded way to say, make sure that I encourage you in, in the new year, whenever you're celebrating to um, really just make time to take care of yourself. Make time to do the things you love, empower yourself to know that you're worthy, to know that you don't deserve this burnout. And it's not, excuse me, it's not good for anybody. It's not good for you. It's not good for your kids. It's not good for your partner. It's not good for anybody who's got to interact with you. Okay. Um, you can ask my poor husband. Um, he has been by my side, very supportive with every like burnout episode that I've had where I'm just like so exhausted and depressed and all this. And like, he has been there and like, it's not pretty y'all. It's really not pretty. Um, and I'm so very thankful that I have a huge like support system, not just him, um, our families, both, both sides of our families are, are just amazing with that, um, and offering support, um, but I just, I guess I don't want anybody else to have to go through what I've gone through so many times. Um, and my goal is really just to, to just help you know, Hey, we got this. We can, um, you can do this without burning yourself out. It is okay. You don't have to feel guilty either about taking a break. So I really hope that you just at least take something from this um, going into the new year. And I hope that everybody has a happy, prosperous, um, like relaxing um, stress. Well, we're moms, we're going to stress, right? Uh, like less stress than last year, <laughs> new year. Um, so thanks so much for joining me. Um, I hope everybody has a happy new year and I will catch you next time. If you made it this far, thanks so much for listening to another episode of Mom Life Unscripted, the podcast show that normalizes everyday struggles of motherhood without being a Debbie Downer or using toxic positivity. If you like this episode, please be sure to rate and review the podcast and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And don't forget to grab your free resource linked in the show notes below. 10 quick and easy steps to avoid mom burnout. See you next time.